Hare Krishna, <clears throat> my dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in the live studios in the Haven. That's located in Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just a stone's throw from the English Channel. Uh, we're here trying to keep the sound vibration steadily flowing from the haven to all of you and hopefully more and more persons will become um, inspired to hear uh, the Bhaktivedanta purports to the Srimad Bhagavatam and his translations which are stunning The world is pulsating with um, polemics, quarrel, quarrel um, hatred, um, division, divisiveness. Um, the solutions to how to organize human society, how to behave as a civilized human being um, and how to properly search and find out the absolute truth which is the goal of human life is described in full detail in this marvelous Srimad Bhagavatam okay Srimad Bhagavata Mihima Stotram by Srila Sanatana Goswami uh, describes the Bhagavatam, what it is and what it can do. It goes like this Sarva Shastravdi P. Yusha, Sarva Vedaika Satpala, Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja, Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada. O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems, of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dvandodita Aditya, Sri Krishna Paribartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshak Shadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Marika Bando Matsangin Madguro Mad Mahadana Manishtadaga Mad Bhagya Mad Ananda Namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu sadhu ta dayin ati ni chuchita kada hanamun chikada chen mam prem narit kanta yokspura O be, excuse me, O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please, Never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we've reached the 22nd chapter of the third canto 
of Srimad Bhagavatam. The marriage of Kardamamuni and Devahuti. We're starting with text 21. Maitre is continuing to explain uh, and answer the questions uh, of Vidura. Sri Maitreya said, O great warrior Vidura, the sage Kardama said this much only and then became silent, thinking of his worshipable Lord Vishnu, who has a lotus on his navel. As he silently smiled, his face captured the mind of Devahuti, who began to medita meditate upon the great sage. Purport. It appears that Kardava Muni was fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness, because as soon as he became silent, he at once began to think of Lord Vishnu. That is the way of Krishna consciousness. Pure devotees are so absorbed in thought of Krishna that they have no other engagement. Although they may seem to think or act otherwise, they are always thinking of Krishna. The smile of such a Krishna conscious person is so attractive that simply by smiling he wins so many admirers disciples and followers. Text 22 After having mistakenly known the decision after having unmistakably known the decision of the queen as well as that of Devahuti the emperor most gladly gave his daughter to the sage whose host of virtues was equaled by hers. Text 23 Empress Shatarupa lovingly gave most valuable presents suitable for the occasion such as jewelry, clothes and household articles in dowry to the bride and bridegroom. Purport the custom of giving one's daughter in charity with a dowry is still current in India. The gifts are given according to the position of the father of the bride. Pari Barhan Mahadanan means the dowry which must be awarded to the bridegroom at the time of marriage. Here, Mahadanan means greatly valuable gifts befitting the dowry of an empress. The words Bhusha Vasha Parich Chedan also appear here. Bhusha means ornaments, Vasaha means clothing, and Parich Chedan means various household articles. All things befitting the marriage ceremony of an emperor's daughter were awarded to Kardamamuni, who, who was in, until now observing celibacy as a brahmachari. The bride Devahuti was very richly dressed with ornaments and clothing. In this way, Kardamamuni was married with full opulence to a qualified wife and was endowed with the necessary paraphernalia for household life. In the Vedic way of marriage, such a dowry is still given to the bridegroom by the father of the bride. Even in poverty-stricken India, there are marriages where hundreds and thousands of rupees are spent for a dowry. The dowry system is not illegal, as some have tried to prove. The dowry is a gift given to the daughter by the father to show goodwill, and it is compulsory. In rare cases, where the father is completely unable to give a dowry, it is enjoined that he must at least give a fruit and a flower. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, God can also be pleased even by a fruit or a flower. 
when there is financial inability and no question of accumulating a dowry by other means by another means one can give a fruit and flower for the satisfaction of the bridegroom text 24 thus relieved of his responsibility by handing over his daughter to a suitable man Swayambhuvamanu, his mind agitated by feelings of separation, embraced his affectionate daughter with both his arms. Purport A father always remains in anxiety until he can hand over his grown-up daughter to a suitable boy. A father and mother's responsibility for children continues until they marry them to suitable spouses. When the father is able to perform that duty, he is relieved of his responsibility. Text 25 The emperor was unable to bear the separation of his daughter. Therefore, tears poured from his eyes again and again, drenching his daughter's head as he cried, My dear mother, my dear daughter. Report the word Amba is significant. A father sometimes addresses his daughter in affection as mother and sometimes as my darling. The feeling of separation occurs because until the daughter is married, she remains the daughter of the father. But after her marriage, she is no longer claimed as a daughter in the family. She must go to the husband's house, for after marriage she becomes the property of of the husband. According to Manu Sangita, a woman is never independent. She must remain the property of the father while, while she is not married, and she must remain the property of the husband until she is elderly and has grown up children of her own. In old age, when the husband has taken sannyas and left home, she remains the property of the sons. A woman is always dependent either upon her, the father, husband, or elderly sons. That will be exhibited in the life of Devahuti. Devahuti's father handed over responsibility for her to the husband, Kardamamuni. And in the same way, Kardamamuni also left home, giving the responsibility to his son, Kapiladev. This narration will describe these events one after another. Texts 26 and 27. <clears throat> after asking... <clears throat> and obtaining the great sage's permission to leave, the monarch mounted his chariot with his wife and started for his capital, followed by his retinue. Along the way, he saw the prosperity of the tranquil seer's beautiful hermitages on both the charming banks of the Saraswati, the river so agreeable to saintly persons. Purport. As cities are constructed in the modern age with great engineering and architectural craftsmanship, so in days gone by they were, there were neighborhoods called Rishi Kulas where great saintly persons resided. In India there are still many magnificent places for spiritual understanding. There are many Rishis and saintly persons living in nice cottages on the banks of the Ganges and Yamuna for purposes of spiritual cultivation. While passing through the Rishi Kulas, the king and his party were very much satisfied with the beauty of the cottages and hermitages. It is stated here, Pashan Ashrama Sampada. The great sages had no skyscrapers, but the hermitage of hermitages were so beautiful that the king was very much pleased at the sight. Text 
text 28. Overjoyed to know of his arrival, his subjects came forth from Brahmavarta to greet their returning Lord with songs, prayers, and musical instruments. Purport. It is the custom <clears throat> of the citizens of a kingdom's capital to receive the king when he returns from a tour. There is a similar description when Krishna returned to Dwaraka after the battle of Kurukshetra. At that time, he was received by all classes of citizens at the gate of the city. Formerly, capital cities were surrounded by walls and there were different gates for regular entrance. Even in Delhi today, there are old gates and some other old cities have such gates where citizens would gather to receive the king. Here also, the citizens of Brahm, um, Barmishat, Barmishmati, the capital of Brahmavarta, the kingdom of Swayambhuva, came nicely dressed to receive the emperor with decorations and musical instruments. Text 29 and 30. The city of Barhishmati, rich in all kinds of wealth, was so called because Lord Vishnu's hair dropped there from his body when he manifested himself as Lord Bor. As he shook his body, this very hair fell and turned into blades of evergreen kusha grass and kasha, another kind of grass used for mats, by means of which the sages worshipped Lord Vishnu after defeating the demons who had interfered with the performance of their sacrifices. Purport Any place directly connected with the Supreme Lord is called Pitastan. Barhishmati, the capital of Swayambhuvamanu, was exalted, not because the city was very rich in wealth and opulence, but because the hairs of Lord Varaha fell at this very spot. These hairs of the Lord later grew as green grass, and the sages used to worship the Lord with that grass after the time when the Lord killed the demon, Hiranyaksha. Yajna means Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In Bhagavad Gita, karma is described as Yajnartha. Yajnartha karma means work done only for the satisfaction of Vishnu. Something is done for sense gratif if something is done for sense gratification or any other purpose, it will be binding upon the worker. If one wants to be freed from the reaction of his work, he must perform everything for the satisfaction of Vishnu or Yajna. In the capital of Svayambhuvamanu, Barhishmati, these particular functions were being performed by the great sages and saintly persons. Text 31 Manu spread a seat of kushas and kashas and worshipped the Lord, the personality of Godhead, by whose grace he had obtained the rule of the terrestrial globe. Purport Manu is the father of mankind and therefore from Manu comes the word man or in Sanskrit Manusha. Those who are in a better position in the world having sufficient wealth should especially take lessons from Manu who acknowledged his kingdom and opulence to be gifts from the Supreme Personality of Godhead and thus always engaged in devotional service. Similarly, the descendants of Manu or human beings, especially those who are situated in a well-to-do condition, must consider that whatever riches they have are gifts from the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Those riches should be utilized for the service of the Lord in sacrifices performed to please Him. 
That is the way of utilizing wealth and opulence. No one can achieve wealth, opulence, good birth, a beautiful body, or nice education without the mercy of the Supreme Lord. Therefore, those who are in, those who are in possession of such valuable facilities must acknowledge their gratefulness to the Lord by worshipping Him and offering what they have received from Him. When such acknowledgement is given, either by a family, nation, or society, their abode becomes almost like Vaikuntha, and it becomes free from the operation of the threefold miseries of this material world. In the modern age, the mission of Krishna consciousness is for everyone to acknowledge the supremacy of Lord Krishna. Whatever one has in his possession must be considered a gift by the grace of the Lord. Everyone, therefore, should engage in devotional service through Krishna consciousness. If one wants to be happy and peaceful in his position, either as a householder or citizen or member of human society, one must promote devotional service for the pleasure of the Lord. Text 32 Having entered the city of Bar, um, Barhishmati, in which he had previously lived, Manu entered his palace, which was filled with an atmosphere that eradicated the three, three miseries of material existence. Purport the material world, or material existential life, is filled with threefold miseries. Miseries pertaining to the body and mind, miseries pertaining to natural disturbances, and miseries inflicted by other living entities. Human society is meant to create a spiritual atmosphere by spreading the spirit of Krishna consciousness. The miseries of material existence cannot affect the status of Krishna consciousness. It is not that the miseries of the material world completely vanish when one takes to Krishna consciousness, but for one who is in Krishna conscious, for one who is Krishna conscious, the miseries of material existence have no effect. We cannot stop the miseries of the material atmosphere. But Krishna consciousness is the antiseptic method to protect us from being affected by the miseries of material existence. For a Krishna conscious person, both living in heaven and living in hell are equal. How Swayambhuva Manu created an atmosphere wherein he was not affected by material miseries is explained in the following verses. <clears throat> Emperor Swayambhuvamanu, this is text 30, this is text uh, 33. Emperor Swayambhuvamanu enjoyed life with his wife and subjects and fulfilled his desires without being disturbed by unwanted principles contrary to the process of religion. Celestial musicians and their wives sang in chorus about the pure reputation of the emperor and early in the morning, every day he used to, um, he used to listen to the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead with a loving heart. Purport Human society is actually meant for realization of perfection in Christian consciousness. There is no restriction against living with a wife and children, but life should be so con conducted that one may not go against the principles of religion economic development, regulated sense enjoyment, and ultimately, liberation from material existence. The Vedic principles are designed in such a way 
that the conditioned souls who have come to this material existence may be guided in fulfilling their material desires and at the same time be liberated and go back home, back to Godhead. It is understood that Emperor Swayambhuva Manu enjoyed his household life by following these principles. It is stated here that early in the morning there were musicians who used to sing with musical instruments about the glories of the Lord and the emperor and his family personally used to hear about the pastimes of the Supreme Person. This custom is still prevalent in India in some of the royal families and temples. Professional musicians sing with shanais and the sleeping members of the house gradually get up from their beds in a pleasing atmosphere. During bedtime, also the singers sing songs in relationship with the pastimes of the Lord with shanai accompaniment and the householders gradually fall asleep remembering the glories of the Lord. In every house, in addition to the singing program, there is an arrangement for Bhagavatam lectures in the evening. Family members sit down, hold Hare Krishna Kirtan, hear narrations from Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita, and enjoy music before going to bed. The atmosphere created by this Sankirtan movement lives in their hearts and while sleeping they also dream of the singing and glorification of the Lord. In such a way, perfection of Krishna consciousness can be attained. This practice is very old as learned from this verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. Millions of years ago, Swayambhuva Manu used to avail himself of this opportunity to live householder life in the peace and prosperity of a Krishna conscious atmosphere. As far as temples are concerned, in each and every royal palace or rich man's house, inevitably there, was a ni there is a nice temple and the members of the household rise early in the morning and go to the temple to see the Mangalaratrika ceremony. The Mangalaratrika ceremony is the first worship of, in the, of the morning. In the Aratrika ceremony, a light is offered in circles before the deities, as are a conch shell and flowers and a fan. The Lord is supposed to rise early in the morning and take some light refreshment and give audience to the devotees. The devotees then go back to the house or sing the glories of the Lord in the temple. The early morning ceremony still takes place in Indian temples and palaces. Temples are meant for the assembly of the general public. Temples within palaces are especially for the royal families. But in many of these te palace temples, the public is also allowed to visit. The temple of the king of Jaipur is situated within the palace, but the public is allowed to assemble. If one goes there, he will see that the temple is always crowded with at least 500 devotees. After the Mangalaratrika ceremony, they sit down together and sing the glories of the Lord with musical instruments and thus enjoy life. Temple worship by the royal family is also mentioned in Bhagavad Gita where it is stated that those who fail to achieve success in the Bhakti Yoga principles within one life are given a chance to take birth in the next life in a family of rich men or in a royal family or family of learned brahmanas or devotees. If one gets the opportunity to take birth in these families he can, he can achieve these facilities of a Krishna conscious atmosphere without difficulty. A child born in that <clears throat> a child born in that Krishna atmosphere is sure to develop Krishna consciousness. 
The perfection which he failed to attain in his last life is again offered in this life and he can make himself perfect without fail. Text 34 Thus, Swayambhuva Manu was a saintly king. Although absorbed in material happiness, he was not dragged to the lowest grade of life, for he always enjoyed his material happiness in a Krishna conscious atmosphere. Purport <clears throat> The kingly happiness of material enjoyment generally drags one to the lowest grade of life, namely degradation to animal life because of unrestricted sense enjoyment. But Swayambhava Manu was considered as good as a saintly sage because the atmosphere created in his kingdom and home was completely Krishna conscious. The case is similar with the conditioned souls in general they have come into this material life for sense gratification. But if they are able to create a Krishna conscious atmosphere as depicted here or as prescribed in revealed scriptures by temple worship and household deity worship, then in spite of their material enjoyment, they can make advancement in pure Krishna consciousness without a doubt. <clears throat> At the present moment, modern civilization is too much attached to the material way of life or sense gratification. Therefore, the Krishna consciousness movement can give the people in general the best opportunity to utilize their human life <clears throat> in the midst of material enjoyment. Krishna consciousness does not stop them in their prosperity from material enjoyment but simply regulates their habits in the life of sense enjoyment. In spite of their enjoying the material advantages, they can be liberated in this very life by practicing Krishna consciousness, by the simple method of chanting the holy names of the Lord, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Swayam Bhuvamanu ki jai. So I'm going to stop here. My voice is almost going. I've been talking all day. Um, it's almost 7.55. We got a good 35 minutes in. And tomorrow we'll start with text 35. Okay. We will wait in, in anticipation of the uh, reflections of the assembled Vaishnavas. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. First is from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. <coughs> yes, Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hari Bhavo. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, and all the assembled sages, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada and Srimad Bhagavatam with Bhakti Vedanta purports. Hari Bhavo, all glories to the Bhakti Vedanta purports. And from Bhakti Christopher. Yes, Bhakti Christopher. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. All glories to His Divine Grace. Hare Krishna. Thank you. And from Bhakti Rupa. Yes, Bhakti Rupa. Thanks for reading, Maharaj. Prabhupada was always absorbed in Krishna, and thus his smile could make devotees. <laughs> thus his smile did make devotees. 
and his books, his smiling face, are the sound that comes out of his lotus mouth. And these books are transcribed vibrations of his empowered sound. Therefore, when we read these books together like this, we become happy. And Krishna conscious in his association, Hare Krishna. And I'd like to say that this atmosphere that is being described, that was established by Swami Bhavamana in his palace, can be um, evoked in any place that you live in this world. You just have to make a very nice altar and offer all your food that you eat, whatever you eat, to the Lord and um, have Mangalarti in the morning and Abhaya and I, we get up at 3 or 3.30 and we have our Mangalarti. We don't have all the paraphernalia, but we have this beautiful altar and we sing uh, at least a half an hour of prayers and then we um, recite the Bhagavad Gita, one chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, and then um, whatever thought that we hear sticks out in our minds, we return to that verse and read the purport, maybe two or three, and discuss. And in that, light, that way, our lives have become auspicious. And anyone who comes into this place and taste the atmosphere. They say the same things as was said in these purports about Swami Bhuvamanu's palace. But it's not a palace. It's a simple little plain brahmachari sannyasi ashram. It's very simple. But uh, the atmosphere is unmistakable. And then during the day we read the Krishna book when we can and other scriptures. In the evening we sit with all of you and hear the Srimad Bhagavatam. And in this way, way, life is blissful and perfect and pleasing to the heart. Hare Krishna. And we know that by doing this, we're going back to Godhead. And therefore, the miseries of the body, old age, pains, whatever problems come up to maintain things, they are... Uh, no longer a botheration, no longer a disturbance. They're actually a part of the blissful Christian conscious life. Hare Krishna. Sudevi Dasi says Hare Krishna Maharaj. Well, Hare Krishna Sudevi Dasi, Hare Bo, Hare Bo. So simple, but so profound, this Christian conscious life. Even in the midst of turmoil that the world's going through now, it's like we're living a little in a bubble, in an oasis. And it's not that we're completely isolated. I mean, we have to go out and get the things we need to eat and keep ourselves, body and mind together, body and soul together. Hare Krishna. You'll be happy to know that we hope if plan, everything goes to plan, on this Monday we'll be greeting the guest, Jaya Dwaita Swami. will stay with us for a couple of days and we'll enjoy his company also. And I'm sure he'll join us in the readings and you can relish his company also. This is proof. Hare Krishna. Anything else? 
waiting. My voice is gone, I can't sing. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Somebody Hare. from uh, Subarao Rajagopal. Yes, Subarao. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you for your daily readings. As there is a chapter, Bhagavatam has answers to all the questions. Bhagavatam has also all the mellows nicely captured, and our own Sri the Prabhupada greatly delineated the emotions of a typical father, Swayambhavamani, when he gives the hand of the daughter to Kardamamuni. Yes. What great descriptions and translations. Thank you for bringing these mellows out to us by your reading. Thank you. It's my, my pleasure. It's my pleasure. And it's, it, you know, I met Prabhupada or saw Prabhupada uh, 50 years ago in October. And I've been reading his books ever since. And I was there when they came out, one after the other. And we would just sit together and just absorb them, drink them in, and then run out the door and distribute them to as many people as we could. And uh, and I can say honestly, in all these years, and all the times I've read these books, every time I read them, they come to life. There's something new, something I didn't remember before, or something I... It's like I never heard it before. And it's so pleasing. It's hard to describe. Hare Krishna. From Daitari Hari. Yes, Daitari Hari. Hari Bo. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for tonight's reading. It was very attractive to hear about the atmosphere created in Swayambhavamanu's palace. The idea of creating a Krishna consciousness atmosphere using whatever resources we have and the means to do it sounds really pleasing to the mind when presented the way Prabhupada described it. Yes. As you just mentioned now, the atmosphere you've created in that apartment is the practical real-life proof of the example given in the 34th verse. It would be really nice to go back there one day. Well, you're always welcome. Thank you. I went, I'll say something else about this. You know, in the whole Bhagavatam, there aren't that many persons who are actually literally described as having gone back to Godhead. And Swayam Bhuvamana is one of them. Maybe 35, 40 people only are actually described as having gone back to Godhead. And which shows how rare it is, but it also shows that all that you don't have to be a sannyasi or a rishi or a great sage. You can be in any position and just create the atmosphere by doing what? Hearing and chanting about Krishna. So Swayambhuva Manu actually went back to Godhead at the end as described of this pastime and or at the end of anyway, somewhere in the Bhagavatam. And he, he went, he got there he was an administrator, he was a householder, he was an emperor, he had so many duties, you can imagine. But he got there simply because he did what we're doing here every day. Sincerely. For the pleasure of the Lord. And, and for the happiness of the citizens of the world. Hare Krishna. Terry Hari also commented that sounds oh, sorry. the idea of Jayadvaita Swami coming and potentially joining the readings sounds really exciting. Yes, it is very exciting for me. He's one of my best friends and we've been preaching together and working together for many, many years. And uh, I'm looking forward to it so much. And I take it as a direct reciprocation from Śrīla Prabhupāda because he's very dear to Prabhupāda. If you want to listen, I'm not sure about the exact 
day. I think it's the 18th of October, 1977. And Prabhupada got the idea. To st he was in his disappearance bed. He couldn't move. But he got the idea to start to translate again. And Jadwait Maharaj was right there by his side. And Prabhupada said, but this will have to be very carefully edited. And then he said, what does the editor think? And then you hear Jadwaita Maharaj's voice speaking to Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada, this is an excellent idea and we can do this. And Prajumana was there and then they started. And there was an exchange between Jadwaita Maharaj and Prabhupada and it was so clear that Prabhupada had faith in him as his editor. When, when, when the spiritual master has such faith in a devotee, we must also have faith in such a devotee. And that way we please the spiritual master. Hare Krishna. Jemma? Yes, Jemma. Thanks again, Guru Maharaj. Agandarva in Kent. How nice. Sounds like pure bliss, and you can see how real it is when you talk. Jai Sri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Vol. Glorious to Prabhupada. This is from Koladweep Pati Das. Koladweep Pati Das. This was Ali. Hare Krishna. Congratulations. Koladweep. Say it again. Pati. Koladweep Pati. Das Brahmachari. Hare Krishna. Congratulations. We hope to see your Guru Maharaj here also on the 17th. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Finally, I caught up again to the live readings. Thanks so much for another daily dose. Particularly liked, quote, it is not that the miseries of the material world completely vanish when mm. one takes to Krishna consciousness, mm. but for one who is Krishna conscious, the miseries of the material existence have no effect. We <laughs> cannot stop the miseries of the material atmosphere, but Krishna consciousness is the antiseptic method to protect us from being affected by the miseries of material existence. Starting to see more and more how important regular and sufficient hearing and chanting about Krishna is. I pray that I may be able to get more of a taste for hearing and chanting. Not just important, it's essential. It is the root of making devotional service, especially when you hear in the company of like-minded devotees from a proper source. And this is a wonderful quote that you brought out. I, I also noted that quote, you know. Hare Krishna, thank you so much. From Dalitai? Yes, Dalitai. Dear Srila Guru Maharaj, please accept my obeisance. Hare Krishna. Thank you for tonight's reading. For young people of today, the chosen wording of a woman at all times being the possession of various men in various stages of her life must be difficult to digest. But it appears that it intends to convey that it means that she will be properly looked after and protected, as men tend to look well after their property. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense, but also we think of... Uh, we think of it in terms of being like a slave. But it's not that women are like slaves. Not at all. They do marvelous things. The first thing they do is they're the guru of their children. They're the first guru. All of us, every single one of us, our mothers are our first gurus. Of course, unfortunately for those of us born in the West in this age, most of the mothers don't know what that means. 
or how to be a guru. But still, there are basic laws of nature given from the Vedic principles through the mothers of this world. And therefore, they're so important. You know, better to give than to receive. Share things equally. Say thank you when someone gives you something. All these things are taught by the mother. How to be clean, how to be truthful, how to be honest, how to play fair. So because we have this artificial conception of womanhood, and therefore the more they seem to become liberated from the designated duties given to them by the modes of nature, just as men have their designated duties to, to uh, earn and to protect and to maintain uh, their, their dependents, their family members, wife and children, and so on. This is natural. This is natural life. And when the roles are played properly with the purpose of raising the children up in Krishna consciousness, you have a, a nice population. And now, what kind of population do we have? You know, the citizens have to run the leaders out on a rail, or the, the young people bring guns from a roof top and just shoot innocent people in a festival with no compunction, no feeling of remorse, strict, strictly evil. And when the population becomes, uh, with en when enough of the population become like that, it creates hell on earth. And it's all due to the men and women not knowing, not, not that all of everyone is demoniac, no, but they're, they're, they're not educated spiritually. And they don't know what the goal of life is. And they're not trying to perfect their lives and go back to God. They don't even know that there's a life after death. They're taught this from the beginning. Therefore, when you first start to taste this real uh, prophylactic effect of the hearing and chanting and you, and you realize that the miseries they were going through are reduced first of all and second of all they don't disturb the heart they don't actually disturb the consciousness then you can see the logic and the truthfulness of this Christian conscious lifestyle this is the purpose of the Bhagavatam, to teach us how to live a human life and gain the perfection of human life and go back to the spiritual world where we can live free from misery altogether. Hare Krishna. Subarao. Yes, Subarao. One of the highlights or gems among many is from the purport 3.22.32. Quote, It is not that the miseries of the material world completely vanish when one takes to Krishna consciousness, <laughs> but for one who is Krishna conscious, the miseries of material existence have no effect. We cannot stop the miseries of the material atmosphere, but Krishna consciousness is the antiseptic method to protect us from being affected by the miseries material existence daily readings key drive for mining these out yes and it's nice that more than one hearer brought that same point out and I elaborated a little bit on it also this is very nice this is what Prabhupada wanted just go on discussing the Srimad Bhagavatam among yourselves and everything will remain clear I heard it with my own ears.
Okay, thank you so much, everyone. As usual, it's just getting better and better, although it seems like it can't get any better, but it does. This is the nature. Anandam Bodhivardhanam. Ever increasing blissful Krishna consciousness. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Samabhira Bhakta Brinda ki jai. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bol. See you tomorrow night. Same time, same place, same topic. The unfolding of the pastimes of Kardama Muni, Devahuti, and the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Kapila Dev, who will enlighten us fully. See you tomorrow. Hare Krishna.